the sky. This is great. Oh, oh, the penguins! Penguins, everybody's <laughs> favourite. So I was astounded to hear, or when I read your book, that penguin, the March of the Penguin movie, is not quite accurate. No, no, <laughs> no. It's it's a documentary. It's not really. Um, yeah, it's uh, the thing about March of the Penguins is it, 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 it portrays the uh, Emperor Penguin's annual hormonal drivel, driven trudge across the ice flows as some kind of like epic romance. And the thing about penguins, and this is, you know, what I write about a lot in the book, is we humans we are have a compulsive urge to anthropomorphize animals. We are constantly looking for our reflection in the animal kingdom and that trips us up and obscures the truth because we think these animals, because they look a little bit like us, that they're behaving like us and we sort of project our moral values onto them as well. And um, with the case of March the Penguins, it was a hugely massive popular film and the Christian, American Christian right wing actually adopted the film um, and the penguin is a, a paragon of Christian family values. This, this amazing, romantic, monogamous, fantastic parent, you know. But the trouble is, is that there are dangers associated with choosing a flightless fish-eating bird for moral guidance. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> you know, really we should be looking for moral guidance inside ourselves and not at penguins. Because the problem with penguins is they don't really uh, abide by a Christian moral code. Their, their behaviour it would be challenging for some of the most liberal communities because this is a bird with a very tiny brain, lives in a very, very harsh environment. They are flooded with hormones and programmed to basically reproduce with anything that moves and quite a few things that don't move, like <laughs> deceased penguins, in actual fact. So, I mean, you know, it's sort of not really the Christian family values that uh, that uh, people were after. So you're saying look, look into yourself, not to the penguin, your yeah. values. Yes, exactly. I think it's a safer bet, really, yeah. Yeah, and actually, I, I love learning new facts about penguins. You were, you were saying they move bottle really slowly on land, but in the water, they're so fast and amazing. Yeah, I mean, the thing, the thing about penguins is that they are... The, the penguin is a bird that really wants to be a fish. Um, and uh, so... But the problem is, is it has to lay its eggs on land. So it has to... It's like incredible. It spends most of its time in the water. And we don't get to see that side of the penguin, where they are, you know, they, they, they're, they're one of the deepest diving... Far, they're the deepest diving bird. They can dive to sort of hundreds of metres. They can move it tens of kilometres an hour, hairpin turns, that those feet that waddle so ineffectively on land are a rudder in the water that, that helps them to have this sort of incredible um, manoeuvrability and speed underwater. But of course on land they stumble around helplessly because you know they, they, they have to keep their muscles warm so that their leg muscles are way up the leg so the feet are operated by tendons so it's a bit like operating a muppet to be honest <laughs> it's about it's about as efficient as that you know so because they stumble around helplessly they remind us of toddlers you know so they trick our brains into releasing all these hormones that make us want to nurture them and so we are we are compelled to fall in love with them we think that they're hopeless and helpless and and, and we want to nurture them and so we and we also you know we love them we want to think the best of them we, we don't want to think of their maybe their more nefarious sexual tastes <laughs>